Hi, this is Frank Rodriguez Villela, and uh, I'm playing a charango, an uh, instrument that I learned to play in Los Angeles as a young 20 year old guy up in the uh, guess early 80s. And um, sort of crazy at the beginning, I wasn't too excited to play this instrument, but it was something that was just real special, uh, the sounds on it. It's cool, good little sound. But one of the coolest things that is that um, I got to meet uh, Ramon Stagnado, a dear friend of mine who passed uh, a year ago today. And so it's, it's, um, it's hard, this whole year has been sort of tough. Uh, just looking back at that, just, you know, we're almost, uh, we're friends for almost 40 years and we, um, we met playing, uh, playing these events <laughs> and I played charango, which I've never played. And he played guitar, uh, nylon string guitar at the time he was playing nylon string. Uh, and he really didn't play nylon string guitar. The funny thing is, is, uh, after we sort of met each other, I was playing this instrument. <laughs> And he was playing as uh playing we're all on the, on the same type of gigs or like little concerts around los angeles and so i really got to sort of uh we got to see each other uh and meet and talk music and um i thought it was funny because uh, uh i asked him well what is he uh does he play electric because i was playing mainly electric guitar and he goes oh yes I, that's my main instrument my main instrument is electric guitar as in mine too <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know by here we are playing this uh uh these particular uh events that we were playing uh mu uh music from the and uh from the andes so uh, i thought it was funny here we were these uh electric guitar players playing these instruments and uh and i knew <laughs> we were gonna hit it off when i asked him, well who who do you really like what who what musicians do you like he goes oh man I love, I love Grand Funk Railroad. I said, what? Grand Funk Railroad? I said, well, I love them too. I said, oh, Mark Farner, what a great, what a, what a, what a great guitarist. And we, uh, and I, uh, and it was something that I grew up listening to, uh, originally from Texas, from Houston, and he was from, from Peru. And so I just thought it was so funny that we, Here's this Peruvian cat, and here I am in Texas, and and we're gonna meet, and we're playing these <laughs> these places where we want to play our electrics, and we have the same. Uh, we're inspired by the same band in two different continents, so I thought that was uh, interesting. And from there, we uh, we talked music, we talked guitars, and we got to we got to hang out a lot. Definitely, we uh, he lived very close to my house. I lived on the west side of Los Angeles and he lived uh, off the Tijera Boulevard. I don't know if any of you, for those who know Los Angeles, it's off Tijera and La Cienega. And so we would always get together and play. We For that, we played electric guitar. So we, we practiced uh, in the morning. We had way too much coffee and then we would go somewhere to go eat afterwards. But we had these nice long sessions and it was just just fun it was just one of those things we we did for uh for many for a few years and uh it was so cool we definitely um uh, we we connected we had a lot of the same influences like i said uh um but it was just something that we you know we were two young guys and we 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 after a while we were we were doing the same gigs, mainly live gigs around LA. Um, and so we uh, we always managed to sort of get together so we can practice. That was, you know, one of the things we had to do, you know, when you're in a town like Los Angeles, you get together and you work out little things that you need to work out just to uh, to limber up, you know. And, uh, but he was a, such a, such a great musician, just, you know, just amazing you know he was the tops he was the best uh and i was just so very fortunate to be be his friend and be connected to him and this instrument is what really did it if i didn't play this i probably it would have probably probably i would have probably met him but i wouldn't it would have taken 
a few years so we uh, got to meet him I got to meet him right er, you know early in 1984 and so uh, we uh, we always just shared many times together we would uh, like I said we would practice but then we would go out to we'd go to the baked potato and listen to cats play there see people here go hear people like Steve Luke at their playing or or we'd go, uh, Mike Miller used to play at that time there, or whoever was playing there, and we'd just go out. We'd go out and hang out, and it was just a great uh, a great time. And then um, we um, we would we just shared so many times. Uh, I would ask him uh, questions about, uh, you know, in Los Angeles you had um, people played lotto. You know, it was, the, it was <laughs> I guess it was like the, you would, pick uh, pick a lot of uh, numbers there because there was those uh, like Texas has them too all over the country you have these uh, and I asked them once I said have you ever played those games you ever played like Lotto or uh, and uh, he said um, no no I don't you know well you can win lots of money you know that's, that would be cool he goes oh but if I won the if I won the jackpot that uh, that winning would be you know, I would have all this money. It would the, all this money would take the swing out of my life, and I thought that was the funny thing to say. And uh, so I, but you know, he, he was a little older. He was maybe about four or five years older than I was. And so I, anything he said, I really took to heart. So I remember him saying that he was like, "Oh yeah." So I never played lotto or I never gambled. I didn't like doing that. And but it was because that Ramon said, "Oh yeah, if you." If you hit the jackpot, what's going to happen? You, you get all this money, and it takes the swing out of your life. And so, it was something that anything he said, I really listened to it, and I sort of took it to heart. And uh, I would uh, just recently, uh, like in 2020, early 2020, uh, we got together. I would visit LA a lot, and we would. Uh, I asked him, "Remember when you told me that 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 lotto would take the swing out of your life?" He goes, I said that? I said, yes, you said that. <laughs> and I always, and I I just always paid attention to you because I always thought you were so right. You know, I always, I respected your words. Um, and so uh, there were just so many moments, you know, that we had. Um, I started to work more in live performances and touring. So I'd be, uh, I became a um, musical director for an artist for almost six, six, seven years. And then uh, it was sort of started not turning out to be what I, well, seven years is a long time to be with anybody, but uh, as far as, you know, gigs and stuff, but I did the gig for seven years and uh, it finally uh, ended and I just pretty much quit. Um, and, um, uh, Ramon got to uh, um, actually when I left, I went back to came back to Texas, and uh, and they still had quite a few gigs, and so Ramon was asked to play if he would come in and fill in for a bit. I don't know exactly how long it was, but the interesting thing is that he ended up um, uh, doing the gig. Uh, I guess in a way subbing, doing what I was doing on that particular job, and. Uh, for some reason, the artist was gonna. Uh, she wanted a um, a meeting, so she wanted to meet everybody. Uh, there was a big meeting before the gig, and so um, of course, everybody in the band were people that I'd hired or people that that knew me pretty well. And the funny thing was that uh, uh, ended up uh, the meeting was supposed to be about me. I don't know what, I don't know what was going to be said, and I, I didn't hear too much, but Ramon found that out from least they all, everybody sat down, uh, I assume at a, at a big table, and then the artist said, uh, well, I want to talk about Frank, which I, uh, and then Ramon immediately said, um, wait a minute, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here and I know Frank and Frank is my friend and I don't want to hear anything about anything regarding him whether it's good or bad if it's this meeting it's about him 
I don't want to be here right now. And so Ramon excused himself. He said, I, I need to leave. And so he pretty much um, stood up for me <laughs> in a way. He just didn't want to hear anybody talk bad about a friend. And uh, I mean, I don't know if they were going to talk bad, but uh, he just didn't want to have anything to do with it at that point. And um, he excused himself. I said, I don't want to be here. And uh, I thought that was so interesting. I thought he was like, I mean, he could have lost a gig or he could have been fired on the spot, but it meant so much to him to be, uh, to not be part of something that might be uncomfortable for him, especially with uh, if somebody was going to talk about a friend of his. So that told me so much about his character. He was such a, he, he really um, loved his friends and he was a great friend. And he stood up for, uh, he stood up for what he felt was right in his heart, you know, to be, uh, to not be involved in anything like that. And it could have been not a bad thing, but he just didn't want to deal with it. So uh, I thought it was so cool. You know, there he was, uh, um, and I later, years later, I, I told him, I said, well, I heard what you did. I heard you, there was going to be a meeting and they were going to discuss me or something. He goes, what? He says, yeah, I mean, so-and-so told me that you just stood up there and you didn't want to hear anything. He goes, I did what? <laughs> and then I'm going like, Ramon, don't you remember? He goes, no, did I do that? I said, yeah, you did that. And I want to thank you, I told him. And I thought that was, even even that meant a lot. It meant like he, that's the kind of person he was. There was things he was going to do that he believed in, and they weren't a big deal for him. I mean, he he did, and he, he reacted to, uh, to a situation always in, with integrity, he really wasn't going to be put in that point or in that spot, and uh, it was just a normal thing. It was something him that he would do for anybody. His friends were really important, and uh, but he wouldn't. He didn't remember. But I that 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 just shows me that he that's just the way he is. He was he was uh, those kind of things were just part of his DNA. You know he. He was a faithful friend, a good friend, an honest friend, and a friend for life, you know? And he wasn't, uh, he would have done it to all his friends. So I felt special at the time, but I just realized it's just something the way he was. He was a person that, that ended up really, you know, respecting and honoring that friendship. And I miss him so much. There's, you know, we used to talk all the time and it's hard for me to, you know, he is, um, he was actually me going back to LA, one of the, always uh, going back to LA anytime, there was always either lunch, dinner, or just a nice hangout at a studio. So we did, it was like my, part of my trip to be there, along with other things that I was doing, but he was always a big part of it. And it's hard to go to LA and, and, uh, and not to be and not to see him anymore so that's a very very tough and um, I miss him a lot and uh, I just want to um, just let people know what what a special man he was what a special friend he was I know he was a, a great husband and and obviously just a great musician and um, he's missed he's missed so much he that's a big void in the world and uh, in the music world, in the guitar music world. And uh, I know, um, I know a lot of people miss them. So I just wanted to uh, share a few stories and, um, and just let people know that we were great friends and, and he was friends to so many people that, uh, I know, mo I know so many people feel this way. So I just want to, uh, to honor him and I wanted to uh, uh, just say how much I miss him. And um, it was just a, such a great honor to, to meet him and 
this little instrument brought us together and we we spend many a times uh, playing and talking and and uh, and <laughs> and having way too much coffee but uh, it was a great time and uh, just wanted to share those things with you and uh, yeah that's all <laughs>